this product it's non-toxic let's start there let me show you the product that i produced using this beautiful magical thing i push it because it's incredible you guys will love it if you've never used it so this is um, one of my favorites it's primarily unicorn spit with some alcohol ink but primarily unicorn spit look at the ribbons and the transparency that you can get with that oh the unicorn spit lady <laughs> she made it in her kitchen okay so she's girl boss already um, jasmine scented there are no polymers in it um so there's no glue basically if you put it on wood and it dries so quickly you can rub your hand across it and you're not going to feel the bump of like an acrylic paint or something like that so it's fabulous especially if you're into resin because bam um just i mix it in with my alcohol inks my acrylics you don't have to it can you can paint with it you clean it up just with water the magic and also the curse <laughs> of unicorn spit it's not really a curse um is that when you put it on and you really like something if you touch that back with water anything with water in it it's going to reactivate and the possibility of losing your gorgeous piece um is gone so or is there so what i do is if i'm layering and i really want to paint something i'm not doing a pour or anything like that i'm layering this is what i do but this isn't the fast drying, but I usually use the Minwax Polyurethane Spray Fast Drying. It's 15 minutes. Go get a cup of coffee. Then come back and start all whatever you wanted to do on that piece, whether it's on wood or canvas or metal or glass or anything. It's just, it's so cool. You can just start right again using your unicorn spit and painting again. And you can do that as, as many layers as you want. I have. <laughs> And then resin it or really seal it with whatever special things you like that. The, the blessing is if you haven't sealed it and you think, ooh, I really don't like this area, it's kind of like oils in the way that you get to go back to it and start reworking it just by adding water. So it's very cool. Now you do have to remember, if you've added the alcohol inks or the acrylics, that's going to change the, the story here. <laughs> so that's a lot on unicorn spit because it's worthy. <laughs> I kid you not, it is worthy. Um, they come in sparkles, good grief. And it's not like the glitter, kind of like childlike-ish. Um, it's iridescence. And they get down into that grain in the wood and it just pops. Y'all just love it. But I would recommend, because you might you might think, ooh, that's too expensive. Don't, don't think that, because I thought that too. <laughs> and it feels like it, but they last a very long time they're super saturated and concentrated you can learn a lot the last thing i'm going to say about it <laughs> is you want to get a good big black and white because those are the things i feel that makes the unicorn spit pop so there's that all right i hope i covered enough you guys what color is in the big bottle this this is what these are my t-rex alcohol inks it's just absolutely fabulous on wood so i mean i'm just beginning to learn alcohol ink and wood marriage is beautiful and so i ran out of the sparkle so i just got a huge bottle of it I'm a little excited about today let's get started grab your stuff So that's what I would recommend. Just Google is your friend, y'all, and so is YouTube. Today we're working on a cradle board. This is what, usually what you see when you search cradle boards. It just looks like a wood piece, but the back it makes a cradle because they framed the entire piece with wood. And you can use cradle boards this way and this way, and that's what we're going to do today. If you've got a piece of board that doesn't have the cradle around situation, that's where your epoxy sculpt can come in. And we're going to use it, so I'm going to introduce it. You can go search it on your own later. Um, 
This is epoxy sculpt. It is a two-part epoxy, so it's easy to mix, but you do want to follow all the directions and safety precautions. You do want to have gloves, several pairs of gloves, because um, it just makes it easier to work with. But, um, but definitely gloves for the safety. Uh, you take half, not half, <laughs> you know, one part this, that's what I was trying to say, one part this, one part the other. Don't panic that they look like that no matter what color you order. So far I've seen they come in tan, black, or white, but you can paint them when they're dry and mix them together, fully gloved, and then you're gonna set it aside for as long as it sets and do something else. You'll come back and start working with it. The epoxy sculpt is beautiful because in the very beginning, when you begin to start working with it, it's very sticky. That's when you want to start applying it onto your wood. Say you want to use this side because you want more freedom and more space. You'll take your epoxy sculpt and begin sculpting, say, a tree of life coming up and around. And you use it just as you would clay, but it adheres to this wood so much that if you try to get it off later, you're going to pull up the wood. So... Yay. That's what I love about the epoxy yeah. sculpt. Um, I'd recommend, if you've never used it before, to get the small, because I got a big bucket, couldn't go through it fast enough. So, um, and then, you know, get a backup just in case, yeah, this is working out. Get another small backup set. So, you can paint it later. It's so fun. But that's a way to use, you know, if you can epoxy sculpt something all the way around this, um, then you can go ahead and pour resin right in there using the epoxy sculpt as your border like this is to this side. You know, Sam? Amazing stuff. So I'm not sure which one I want to start on. Shannon, Shannon, you aren't even supposed to be here. <laughs> Welcome beautiful daughter and moderator. <laughs> Welcome, Sherry. Hey, Cookie. Sorry, guys. I've just been yakking it up. <laughs> Welcome. So I talked about the unicorn spit and to find me on YouTube, Cape Charles Art. And guys, I would, uh, blessings to you all if you would subscribe to my Cape Charles Art YouTube channel because I've got goals. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to do the little one. I don't know. I'm going to do the big one. All right. All right. So the first thing you're going to decide, and I sent a video out. Uh, I don't know if y'all got it, but a lot of times if you're an artist or a creator and you don't know uh, which direction to go, you know, um, a lot of times what I do is I start thinking, what kind of feeling do I want, you know, or what do I want to project into this piece? What do I want to flow out? And then what do I want those people to feel when they look at this piece? And so, I mean, it could be something very light, very fairy, very like this music, or it could be mysterious, but those feelings, it could be, it could be rage or whatever it is, whatever you're feeling and whatever your emotion is that you want to create, Think of the color. Don't think of what you're going to do. Think of the color that that brings up, that conjures into your mind. <laughs> this is sounding really witchy. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> that's where I start because without emotion, I don't want to draw a thing, you know? It's like I look at something, it strikes a chord in me, and then it's like, ooh, that would be a neat blah, 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 right? <laughs> So begin with your emotion and and then once you get that, you know what, I want to bring some light. I want to bring some life. Then you know, oh gosh, I'm going for yellows or I'm going for vibrancy or whatever. And then in that, your mind already from seeing whatever we've seen in our lives and before, <laughs> we start getting the images of the yellows that we've seen. And I'm telling you, if you just want to begin to put those colors down, that will break that, that you know, block that you have. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. And generally when I do any painting at all, in case you're new and don't know and want some ideas, if that's my canvas, I generally want to keep this nice and white somewhere. 
and I would if I was doing a fairy forest or if I was doing an underwater galaxy <laughs> or anything because I want to be able to draw people in to my canvas and so by doing that and the outside or at least a portion of the outside being darker you will automatically be drawn deeper so that's just a tip in case you don't know where to start and turn this the right way I'm not using gesso or anything like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a background color I'm gonna go probably with blues and burbles like I always do but you never know and then I'm going to put my my lighter in there but Remember, you want to do keep it light. You want to do, especially if you're working with alcohol inks, because it's stain, okay? And also, the unicorn spit is stain, all right? So if you're working with acrylics, just go for it, same as you always would with acrylics. Paint a background, and uh, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and put my gloves on because uh, alcohol inks. Welcome, you guys. I just can't believe that Shannon, you are here. Prayers going out to you and also um, Turkey. Everybody in Turkey, you guys. Sit in love, light prayers. Let's bring some love and light back into this world today by creating something that people will look at and be moved. One way or another, I don't care. <laughs> Just be moved. <laughs> All right, let's go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, you know, I, I'm gonna start, which is kind of crazy, but I'm gonna start with my black unicorn spit. I'm gonna remember to leave some light. But I just wanna start, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a cup, because unicorn spit is very concentrated. Oh, I'm just going to pour it in there and take any brush you want. I'll take a big one. And then I've got a little bit of water. Now, if you just want to stain the wood um, and let that wood grain come through, I recommend spritzing that area and then using your unicorn spit and it really gives it a nice flow and all that. If you want to use unicorn spit more as a paint where you want to be able to draw lines and branches and such, then just leave it as a paint. It's cool. So let me go ahead and just, I'm going to spritz some area because um, I have no rhyme or reason as to how I decide I'm going to create I just like to play and experiment. That's how I figured out I could put alcohol ink and um, my unicorn spit together. So, so where I've put it on the damp, it may be lighter than where I put it on the dry. I don't know, I'm experimenting. Oh, thank you so much, Re. Thank you so much. That is alcohol inks behind me, the big one. And it's all T-Rex. There are unicorn spit areas that are enhanced, but I'm telling you, sitting down and just painting with alcohol inks, if you've never done that before, and it doesn't matter, don't... You know, to me, it's like, don't sit down and, and try to paint it something. Just sit down and start putting colors on. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, look at this. I see whatever it is. And then just go for it. <laughs> That's what I do. That's my theory and technique. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I don't know why I'm making this all black. Oh my gosh. But I am. But I think it's gonna be okay because, um, well, we'll find out what happens when we paint something all black like this. And try and make a nightlight out of it. When we get to the epoxy part, you guys, man. Now look at the coverage on that. Even where I sprayed 
it with water. It's still nice. The beauty of, of unicorn spit is the wood grain shows through. And so um, that's, that's what I really liked about it. If I don't like this, let's say I just put a bunch of this black down here, all right? So if I don't like that and I wanna go ahead and lighten it up a little bit, then I will take some white unicorn spit. Since I need some white in the middle, this is a good time. Always shake your unicorn spit really well. I came in last night late <laughs> and tipped all my unicorn spit bottles upside down so that the sparklies would all drop down. And I thought, yeah, that's not a good idea. I should keep that into practice. All right, so I've got a little bit damp on my brush, not much. I got some white for my white center. Hope you can see it. And I'm just gonna start pushing it back into what I just made into that black. I'm just gonna push it in until it grays. Okay, now just when I did that, I mean, it looks like clouds and smoke and already, if I had no direction in my head of which way I'm going and I don't. <laughs> Already I'm thinking, ooh, clouds. It could be heaven or something. I can't ever think of the name where it's kind of earth and ethereal. Anyway, that, it could be that. So just by dipping your brush into water and adding different colors into that black, this is gonna be a hoot, y'all. I don't care what this is. It could be nothing at all. It could be all just beautiful colors. And then when we put the lights in there and under resin, oh, gasp worthy. So maybe that's what I'll do today. Just beautiful colors. What are you guys doing? Ray, it is so fun. It is so fun. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add some purple because you know, I must. Now this is not going to be able to be moved. So maybe I'll hold off on the purples. What do you think? Let me use unicorn spit purple instead so I can change it and morph it and stuff. Then if I'm satisfied with that, I'll zero in and put it in there for life <laughs> with the al uh, alcohol ink. Just put the purple right on the wood. So many different ways you could use this, you guys. You can even paint your jeans. Like I've ruined these jeans from painting all the time. You know, I got spots and stuff, <laughs> but I like these jeans because they've got flowers. And I saw the other day, the unicorn spit lady, she can, she was putting the unicorn spit on jeans and painting it. And it's in a way that's not, when you wear them, it's not crunchy, like old timey stuff, you know? <laughs> so I thought, oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> it began. <laughs> so much to learn from them. Um, Really, I am so grateful she came up with this project. I don't know how she did it in her kitchen. I thought, what was it, Kool-Aid? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just taking a brush and I'm blending in between my unicorn spits of the purple and the black. I like just that flow, so I'm just gonna keep going with the flow. That's how that happened. If you want it lighter, add water. You can, you can just wipe it off. I mean, if you just wanted to go, okay, that's too much purple, wipe it off and then start, you know, just kind of pushing on it. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm getting a nice lacy edge that way. See, that's what I'm saying. You just gotta play, just play in your paint, y'all. Let your inner child come out and play. I'm just tapping around with that purple and white. I liked it, so that's where I'm going. And I'm gonna tap up the sides because I don't, I wanna incorporate the sides into it somehow. And you don't need to know from start to finish, this is what gets, gets me free again, is I don't need to know what it is I don't need to know from start to finish how to do it. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I just have to come out and play. And the rest is up to whatever happens. And that's, 
that's where the joy comes in because all of a sudden you end up with something you had never planned and you love it and it makes you feel good when other people are touched emotionally by something and you know your life as a creator that desire that you've always had is coming to fruition and there is nothing more exciting than that and that's it's not the ego trip uh you know if if someone looks at from the outside and they're not an artist they may think even if uh not an artist like a musician or whatever it's not an ego trip it's kind of like you were finally seeing fruit of what you know you were born to do and yet sometimes as an artist whatever your creative thing is people if you receive it will try and trivialize it you know it's play but it's not real work or it's not you know as important as something else but i'll tell you what i believe that is incorrect in my life anyway and um <laughs> I just think we should just go out there and shine and just learn as much as you can. Not so much from other people's, you know, technique and things like that. I watch like paintings by Randall. Sometimes he'll, he's working in oils. He'll have a technique I can pick up and transfer over. That's awesome. Same with Bluebird. I don't know if you guys follow her, but she is, she's a beautiful soul. I don't know if she's been on today, but, um, She's a beautiful soul and she's just so uh, easy going. So I pick up some of that from her and then I go on to someone else. And um, it's just, that's what you gain. You gain then the freedom to be you from going to different places. Then you gain, I gain who I am as my own individual artist when I play and paint. You know, whatever medium it is, when as musicians you sit down with your guitar, you know, that's the only way to really know you and who you're growing into as an artist. And, and to know that there's things in there that you know you can do, one of these days you're going to bring out. And it's just exciting. The journey is just exciting. This art tribe is beautiful. Oh, blue. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thanks. I love you too, sis. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I've seen you before. Welcome. <laughs> so I have a very mystical, almost darkish, cloudy looking, whatever. I said hour and a half for this. We're going to have to do another hour and a half in a little while because it's not going to be, we're not even going to get close to the epoxy skull. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just playing. Just playing. Really, I'm so excited about the unicorn spit and um, the alcohol ink on Floetrol, guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, Shannon did a painting. It was absolutely beautiful. I'm first shocked because, um, I guess this is black. I'm going to add more black. Um, she just doesn't have time. And then, well, I'm not shocked that it was beautiful. She is a fabulous artist, but, um, it was absolutely beautiful. I'm shocked that she, she actually, um, framed it <laughs> because most of my stuff is not framed. As a matter of fact, I try and create art that I don't have to frame, but, um, uh, because it spoke volumes to me that she felt it was worthy of a frame. And it is. And not only that, they all are. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying, creators. But oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Looks like a moon in the center with the stormy clouds in front. Ruth, welcome. Yes. Well, it's, it's getting darker. This may be trees. It could be a path. Who knows? <laughs> I gotta do something in the top before I start messing with the bottom though because that's the thing if you've never painted before guys don't follow my example <laughs> make sure you get all of your background on before you start deciding what this is I'm gonna go fix the background <laughs> well we're just playing I can I can keep messing around I will I will lose this a million times before it's fi finished which is beautiful it's fine that's what's so neat about the unicorn spit 
Okay, I need a color up there. And I think I want to go with some red. It's probably a bad choice in some ways. <laughs> so I'll only put a little bit down. I also want some sparkle just for the fun of it. And it is, um, I love their names, Jasmine Scented and it's Starling Sasha. Mm -hmm. Learn about unicorn spit from my YouTube channel. Uh, because I talk about it all the time, but I am not a paid spokesperson or anything like that. I just love the stuff. And it's uh, Cape Charles Art YouTube. Okay, I'm going to just dampen the brush again. And just tap that in. Because I, I do want it to stain in like mystical little ribbons. So if I put it directly on the wood... It will stain how I put it. And then I don't have to worry because I can go back over it and paint and take it off by covering it up if I don't like it later. So I might. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some drops of the purple alcohol ink in there. And I'm gonna sparkle it up by using some T-Rex, love T-Rex, um, sparkler. So all it is, it's a blending solution with sparkle in it. I don't know if you can pick this up or not. Can you see it at all? Let me, can you see it sparkle? Anyway, it's amazing. It really is. There may be several moons in this, I'm thinking. Right now, I'm just trying to get color in the background. I'm not really thinking so much as design. I wanna be able to brush stuff away and see color behind it. Um, and I'm not really picky right now as to what color's back there. So let's add a little bit more white, keep things moving with the white I like to. And then depending on what brush you use is what you're gonna get, you know, as far as patterns and stuff. You had the frame on hand, so it was easy. Looks, that's perfect. I have also taken, uh, like we bought paintings one time when we were down at the beach and I needed a frame, <laughs> true confession. If Mr. Gleason's on, <laughs> uh, I thought, oh man, that frame would be perfect for this, so I snagged it. But I used it for a picture, this is justification, in the guest room. So, I mean, it's not like, <laughs> we're still using it. Oh, that red, it just went so far, you guys, shockingly. Farther than I had expected, I know better. <laughs> Here we are, red. You know, I don't have a lot of red stuff. Might be interesting. Might be fun. Let me see. I want some more purple. Let's put some purple sparkle in. Okay, honey, I love you. Sherry, I do have fear. I did. Uh, I don't allow it anymore. <laughs> Thank you, though. That's a good comment because, you know, that's what stops all of us as creators is that, yeah, but what if I messed up? Or whatever the fear is that goes off in your brain when you start to try and create. <laughs> so that's when I learned that technique of playing in my paint where just get in there and move colors. I know I can do that. Anybody can do that, right? And it doesn't have to be with a brush, right? 
Oh gosh, this is getting good. Hold on, I've gotta do something here. I wanna add a little bit more of the white. I'm kinda of upside down from what it looks like to me. Oh wow, dang, that's a lot. Let me add some purple in that. And then into that. Now, if you go ahead and build it up this thick and left it, it will eventually dry, you know, because we're going to resin. So you could do that if you wanted. I'm just saying. But I don't want to. You guys, this is the worst thing I've ever done. I mean, to show anybody to start anything. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> It just flows so good. The side of this cradle board, I'm a little concerned with because it looks more like a pressed board than it does wood. So I, I know it'll be fine for that one thing of resin, but I don't know how much it can take as far as getting wet and dry, wet and dry in this creative process. But the, at the same time, I'll never know. This is why I don't have the fear anymore. Um, I'll never know if it works unless I try it. That gives myself permission that if it blows up in my face, it's like, oh good, okay, I learned. It doesn't work, <laughs> try something else. And if it does work, that's fabulous because these are less expensive with the same result because everything gets resined anyway. So I'm letting that pink, whatever that is, come back up over the side now with this brush. Buffalo, thank you. Aw, blessings. Welcome. So sweet. I'm just pushing this out <laughs> onto the black. I figure in a second it's going to turn into something and I'm going to be really happy about it. But right now it's just a bunch of weird colors. Colors I'm not really thrilled with, so I'm wondering why I'm playing in them. Trying to force myself out of a groove never works. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> Your artsy self, your inner child, they know what they want. Leave them alone. Stop. Get your brain out of it. Let them play. Aw, oh, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day too, Buffalo. <laughs> I just call you Buffalo. I don't know. It's okay, I have someone else I call Donkey because his name has something with Donkey Donkey Arts is a it's like Okay, so I have this thing it's just a mess of different colors coming out. It's okay. I'm not happy with the red. It's um I don't wanna go that direction. I don't wanna be that intense. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take um, a cloth and wipe a lot of some of that off as much as I can. And I know, you know, it's alcohol ink as well. So there's that. Ooh, ooh, never mind. I'm just going to go ahead. See, that's what happens. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> All right, that, that, that was cool. Hold on, I'm not done. <laughs> Now see, all of a sudden, I like the red. Totally different. This is why I love art. Oh my gosh. No, is it done? No. <laughs> it, does it move anybody else? Maybe not. But if you can look closely. I... I think there's possibility of it becoming very fabulous. 
Happy accidents, that's right, Bubba. <laughs> Yay! Yay, Blue! Thanks! Okay, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna dip my brush in water and see uh, what happens when I just go around the outside with whatever color I did put out there. And just kind of mist it in a little bit more. I don't want a hard edge, but I do want kind of a smoky look. And the unicorn spit is the easiest, easiest medium I've ever found. If you want smoke, <laughs> unicorn spit, baby. Just brushing that in a little bit. It might be even easier if I spritzed it, but I want a little bit more control than that, so. just picks up those colors and starts moving them around again. Beautiful thing. What about a darker hue of red toward the bottom? Yes, that would be very nice. Thank you, Buffalo. Of course, we don't really know what the bottom is. <laughs> But yes, and it would be nice because that would definitely draw you in, which is what I was trying to explain earlier. Very cool. I do want to put some other colors in here instead of this. Um, I'm, I'm thinking a midnight blue sparkle might be kind of a nice thing. And with that red, we'll only go more purple, I'm sure which also might be a good thing. Let's put some black and some red unicorn spit without the sparkle, just a touch. Gleason TD, welcome, hubby. Aw, that's exciting. My support, my system, <laughs> my brain. <laughs> I know, not true. <laughs> I can hear him stop. <laughs> I'm gonna add some sparkle to that. <laughs> Thanks, Ruth. Some yellow, maybe turn it more orange. I imagine before we're done, they will all be in here somewhere, but I like where you're going with that, absolutely. This is the Alcohol Ink uh, Clear Blender Stardust Clear. It's just iridescence, silver iridescent. But I want to show you something in a second. It's going to be cool. You're going to love it. Just add, since we're doing fairy stuff, or I am in my head, even though it's not really looking very light, light fairied. Thanks, Buffalo. That's what I was thinking too. What was it? Oh, yellow. Alrighty. <laughs> well, let me just toss it up here because that looks good. Um, so let me get a different brush. Drop it in some water and put that in there. So I don't really want it into the black right now. Oh, yep, yep, yep. I'm loving it. Give me some white. That's what I like um, about going into different rooms, Buffalo, is just watching their creative process because everyone has a different way. You know, some people are so organized and I'm like, ooh, that's so smart. And before I used to think, okay, I gotta be more organized. You know, as you're first starting out, you're just trying to learn anything and you don't know. Love the yellow idea. Thank you so much. Look how pretty this is. It's getting into the green, but I don't care. Um, it's gonna be some weird colors in here because I'm making a fairy land, I've decided in this whole process of talking. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. It could change, subject to change. But anyway, look, uh, with the yellow and just adding a touch of the unicorn spit white, that's kind of a cool thing. I know that's a huge amount of yellow, but... 
still cool. Uh, let me show you what happens when you drop this stardust. Since we're just playing, um, when you drop the clear blending solution stardust on this, and it could be any of your alcohol ink colors. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything, but can you see? Let me just let it run. Can you see any? Uh, oh, boy, I like that. Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to drop a few more colors. I'm really liking this process. And that's the thing, you guys. It doesn't matter what you're doing or where you are. If you find something that's fun, go for it. <laughs> Get into it because that's when it really becomes a joy. Let me look. Now think of this under, not just like this, <laughs> but you know, under resin and having it light up. So you really can't go wrong with these nightlight ideas, y'all. <laughs> It'll be fabulous. <laughs> Whatever you decide. Whoosh, that's strong. I better be careful of that as I throw more in. Okay, the next thing is um, before we take a break, and I do need to take a break. What time is it? 12, 23, three messages. Um, thanks for the likes, you guys. I appreciate that. It really does, I didn't understand it, why everybody's like, tap the screen. But what it is, is it just pushes my life out there to more people. Um, so I get more views, so I can tell people to go to Kate Charles Art on YouTube <laughs> and follow me. <laughs> anyway, but you can go out there and watch all of this later, but I will trim it down so you'll just get the process, okay? This is a watercolor pen. I have water in it right now. But I have other pens that I put the clear blending solution in, just clear. And if you put just water in these, they're fabulous. They're inexpensive. You buy them in sets. They have different brush tips. With the unicorn spit, it is fabulous because unicorn spit's activated and cleaned up by water. So you can push it around, add to it, and everything with this and choose the tip you wanna mess with it with um, without adding water to your piece. Oh, honey, <laughs> sometimes you get a nugget. That is a nugget. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and for some reason, um, I, I still use it when I use my alcohol inks and I know you use a blending solution with your alcohol ink. But when I'm working with my unicorn spit and alcohol ink combo, I use them with water. So I'm just basically trying to mess with my unicorn spit at that time and just whatever. So, but you know, you do you, you might find a new way to use it and please let me know because that's fabulous. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go over this whole thing now that I've got a whole bunch of random weird colors and lots of sparkles. with water. I was gonna say white, but I'm gonna try water first. Um, I just wanna see what's there. <laughs> what's left. What's not gonna move. Want me to say it four different ways? <laughs> what's stable? Do you know you can make alcohol ink by mixing spit with 70% alcohol? Cool, do it yourself, dingbat. Sweet, did not know that. Well, maybe that's, well, maybe that's why it works so good together. I thought I found something. <laughs> Cause I was like alcohol ink and and unicorn spit works so good together. I was so excited. Still am. All right, let me just brush it around, brush it in. All right, now you've seen that process. You see, it doesn't make sense really. It's not technical. Anybody can do it. I just put a bunch of different colors on everywhere. And I'm doing the same thing again. I'm, I'm making it a mess. I'm making it muddy. And then I'm bringing it up 
making this muddy. Because I want it really muted to the point where people look back there and then they think they see something and they can figure out what it is they see all by themselves. They can create anything they want by just looking at it in their own head. I don't have to paint it for them. I'll tell you what I, I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. <laughs> Just adding lots of water to the edges and uh, blending in that what I pushed out there, making it a softer flow to the edge. And still, I don't know where I'm going with my design overall. I really don't have a theme still. I do know the feeling I want is to be drawn into something. So a circle is a good place to start with that for me. I love circles. Can you tell I love orbs? Anything around? <laughs> Beautiful. Good info. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. See, this is why I love our art tribe. People find things and share it, and then it's like, oh, <laughs> more toys. All right, I messed with that enough. Okay, now, so this is what I have for right now. This is it. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and put the white on one more time, right in the center. I'm hoping for something to show up like it is in my head when I do this, but <laughs> it may not. It's okay. We'll see. The epoxy part, I'm going to have to set up different anyway, I think, because um, I'm just brushing it across you guys. I'll go in a circle. Yeah, I think I'll go in a circle and make some weird scrolling looking things in my sky. Anyway, the epoxy sculpt part, I need to get the cutting board up here or level it up or something, get a, a different surface set up. and put all this stuff away. So we'll probably have to take a break and come back. And if you can't make it back, I fully understand. Well, it's like totally huge, but this has to have time to dry a little bit. So not long, probably about 15, 20 minutes or whatever, but I'm thinking we'll take a longer break than that um, before we put the epoxy sculpt on. We could make it Thursday too, it depends. You know, because we don't want to put epoxy sculpt on until you're ready on the background because the epoxy sculpt, when I put it on, I want it to come off of the edge and go over my design somehow and then, you know, really become a piece of it. And um, so you want the background that you're painting to be finished so that when you lay in your lights and stuff, you can do the final touches. Like when we put the, say we're doing a fairy nightlight. You put the lights in after you've got your trees and fairies or whatever it is you've put in there. You put your lights down and you glue them down. And the way you do that, I'm just gonna take this off for a second because we're gonna take a break. I gotta take a break. <laughs> um, I don't know where my lights went. So you take a strand of fairy lights. Uh, in case you can't come back, I just want you to know this is how, how we're doing it. Oh my word, y'all. So long. 
So you want the ones that have the replaceable battery. Okay, I got a party one. I don't know if you can see, but it's lit up in different colors. So anyway, um, that battery pack with the epoxy sculpt will be mounted somewhere on your design. Just be thinking about this if you wanna just go ahead and work on it by yourself, you don't come back, whatever the situation. Um, I would put it on the outside with an epoxy sculpt, you know, tree or whatever it is, put it in the trunk, somewhere where you can slip it out of the pocket so you can change the battery, because that's what makes this actually work as art, I think, because you don't want it to not be able to light up again. So, I mean, there's gonna be a time, but whatever. <laughs> So make sure you're thinking in your theme, your design of how you're going to mount that battery pack. Now, the reason you can mount it on the outside is because of epoxy sculpt, right? So you're going to have to figure out a way, this is what the puzzle is, where you're going to get this part with this thick wire outside and all of this inside, right? All of the lights inside. Or they could be in the epoxy sculpt outside. So that's what happens. You start build, you put your lights wherever you want them. If you're gonna put it in the epoxy sculpt, then just wait. But put your lights wherever you want them in the inside. And then um, when we get ready for the epoxy sculpt, you'll do your design on the outside, whether it's a seahorse that its fin covers it or a log where it's tucked inside the log. I mean, it would be the fun part, actually, not a burden. If, if you start thinking of it like that. You know, it could be the galaxy. You could even make a, a, a galaxy out of it. And the cool thing too is you can use foil underneath it so you can use less epoxy sculpt and make a bigger piece that doesn't weigh very much. Let's go to my profile page and click that notification bell on my profile page. It will alert you to my random off the wall lives at different times. Um, Follow the precautions, use your mask. I'm just gonna take a small one. It goes a long way and it's really hard to knead. So if you have like, and I'm not joking, <laughs> seriously, I have, I have bones in my hands that don't wanna cooperate. If you have any arthritis or anything like that, it is hard. So it may not be the medium for you. I just don't want you to waste your money on it. If you have a hard time with um, squeezing things or anything like that, it's, it's hard. Um, but if you have a helpmate who doesn't mind doing that part for you, as soon as that's over with, it's, it's no longer difficult to work with. So I don't want you to miss out thinking, okay, I can't use it because it's, it's only the kneading that is hard. So, um, do you want to make sure you cover your <laughs> back up? So anyway, and at this point is where you need your mask, but I just hold it out like this because mine's somewhere else. Sorry, uh, hold it away from me. <laughs> it's very airy in here, very open, just saying. And I, I just kind of make two flat things with it and I just start pushing it together like that. That's just how I do it. And you'll see as you do that green, horrible green looking color that it is, will become less and less and I'm telling you, you're going to be frustrated with this. Just know that. <laughs> but now it's not, it's not not worth it. It's worth the frustration, y'all. It's worth the work because epoxy sculpt is something that, um, say I have, okay, here's one. I made this little octopus. This little octopus guy is epoxy sculpt. It's heavy, it's all epoxy sculpt. I didn't put it around foil or anything. But if you're a boater, you get that. Because green is on your starboard side and starboard is the right side of the boat. And to remember that my dad, my captain, until I got another captain, um, he would always tell me, um, Let's see, let me see, red, right, returning, or something like that. So I knew that if I was coming into port, the now it's gonna be backwards probably for you, but anyway, it's red, right, returning. So, but that's epoxy sculpt. So someone can take that because it's just driftwood that's been sealed 
and a little epoxy sculpt octopus and hang it on their covered porch and it's going to be fine because the epoxy sculpt is perfectly fine to sit outside you don't seal it with anything it's just a fabulous tough tough product so to be able to use it in art is like holy moly this is fabulous look how it it's turning white now because i ordered the white and if you order black it'll turn black and tan the same all right and if you subscribe to my youtube channel it's also free um then you can get all of my lives there edited out all the fluff talk stuff <laughs> well most of it and just get down to the process of whatever it is you want to see that you might have missed so it helps me out i want to help you out so that's perfect okay this is the point where you're going to be going oh i hate this stuff okay but don't worry about it you're going to get through it breathe <laughs> it's going to be okay so if you get to the point where you can pull it apart and you don't see any variation of color, then it's mixed. How easy is that? Then just set it aside someplace and take your gloves off because it stinks. Put them far away. Now, the stink goes away. Um, that real, oh my gosh, uh, epoxy smell, it goes away as this is sitting here. I don't even smell it. All right, it has to sit there for a few minutes, so smells the paint. Um, let me go ahead and just put some pretty in here. Um, you know, I really kind of like the yellow idea. I don't have a lot of yellow either. So... Just put some white and yellow unicorn spit in there. Take a fan brush, get it down. Thinking I wanna put a horizon line in. I want water all of a sudden. Maybe it's the music. Maybe it's the fact that I just love water. Ooh, but look at this. This is cool. Welcome, Dawn. Yeah, this, I'm not going to be doing the painting on this part today, I'll tell you what, but I'm just not feeling it on this, and this is, I don't want to rush it, so I'm just playing with it still, and I'm going to continue. This is how I do all my art, and if you ever want a process that is not stressful, maybe you could, this could help. Um, you just don't push something. If something's not coming together, you just don't push. <laughs> because I'll tell you, Sherry can tell you. <laughs> you all know. If you're an artist, you know. It's pointless. But it doesn't mean I can't do part of my epoxy sculpt. So, I'll do that. This is gonna be a beautiful piece, you guys. I just don't know what it's gonna be yet. Speak over your pieces like that. Tell them they're gonna be beautiful. Tell them they are beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, right? Why would we say, if you believe that, you know, like Ford, wasn't it Ford that says if a man uh, believes he can't or he can, he's right? It's the same principle, right? So why would we stop that if you really believe that when it comes to your art? Just because it's art doesn't mean that that rule stops, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'm saying that because I had to really examine that, you know, for me. So why I want to look at my art and say, you're going to be beautiful. It doesn't matter if it, it's hideous, you know, right now. Um, give it a chance. <laughs> Let it grow. I'm just going back and forth, guys, again. All right, I think the epoxy sculpt is time. Time, we, we can work with it. 
And I'll just go ahead and put it right on top of this in a section. It's not going to bother anything. I can I can cover it up later. That's what I always say with painting or anything else. Okay, so um, gloves. Not frustrated at all. I'm <laughs> so Thank you. I think I just remembered the conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> I had to keep telling myself this is no different because I, I made it a live event, which is so funny, you guys. Okay, so here's your epoxy sculpt. So you want to knead it a little bit because when it sits, it gets a little stiff. So I'm going to knead it anyway. But I was telling my sis, I'm like, you know, the reason I'm doing random lives and not setting it up at 11.45 like I was is because it gives me stress and anxiety around my art. And I don't want anxiety around my art. I want it to be a beautiful, free-flowing gift that it is. And I want to be in that presence the whole time. And if I'm anxious about doing that, then, and I don't have to, then I'm not going to. So that was a plan. And it was working pretty well. You know, people can go and subscribe and click my little notification bell. Not subscribe. Just click the bell. It's free. And get notified. So, um, I was happy with that. And then all of a sudden, I, <laughs> I decided to do a live event. So, I've had to plan and do videos and all this. <laughs> I don't understand myself. <laughs> But it has been a growing process. So you take just a part of your epoxy skull and you use it just like you would clay. Um, if you've never worked with clay, then use it like you do Play-Doh because everyone's worked with Play-Doh. Make worms, remember them? So you're gonna make worms. And I wish that I had all those fancy clay oh, tools that that they all have, but honestly, I, I don't use it enough to justify to myself yet, but I'll get it. I will, because as my little group grows and my business grows, those tools are going to really come in handy. Because I've learned that if you have the proper tools, paintbrushes, canvases, whatever it is, it's, such, it's so much more enjoyable than, you know, not. You can get to the process you want, but it makes it harder. So goals, guys, set your goals. So I'm going to, this is a root in case you didn't recognize it. And I'm just gonna put it, smack it right down on here. Any old way I want. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I can even, come off of it if I want and then come back on and it'll be nice and strong over there I promise you you won't have to worry about it it's a strong strong epoxy and then it's also becoming a branch up here this root I'm making my little tree and when I get it to where I think, okay, that's cool, for the first little stringy root, I'm just gonna push it down. If you don't want it standing up real high, just push it real hard. And if you want it high, just push it long, hard enough so it sticks to it. And start shaping it any way you want. And it's already so sticking to this, which is fabulous. I'm gonna come off the side. And remember, as you're thinking of building your piece, you know, putting your roots on or whatever it is that you're building, um, remember to think in your design that battery pack is going to go into your design somewhere. Now I have done a painting with the battery pack on a cradle board. I painted on the front and I glued my fairy lights to it and then I taped it, frog taped, 
resin and then took the battery pack and mounted it on the back. The problem was the person that uses it has to take it off the wall to turn it on. And I didn't like that. So um, I didn't like that they had to do that. That They probably wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wanna be able to get to it, right? So, so that's why I'm doing it this way because I like not having to build a dam. I like the solidness of the resin in here, the feature, and the outside being the embellishment. So <laughs> that looks horrible. But you see what I'm saying? That's a root or sand or snake or dragon tail. It's whatever it is and it is not coming off already, okay? So give it 24 hours. It's if you chisel it up, you're gonna be taking the wood instead of just that. It's that good. Now, if it's got wood in a piece, then don't set it outside for a year like I was talking about this. I don't care about this because it's strip woods, it's sealed, and the octopus is epoxy sculpt, so I'm not worried. But um, if you make just an epoxy sculpt piece, set it outside, it's fine. Hang it, do you know your window bling with the crystals and, and that. You can't hang it outside normally. But if you make things with epoxy sculpt, then you can. And it's so perfect. So I'm gonna do one more little thing. Let's say I wanna put a mushroom. If I wanna put something, now I'm gonna add roots and tree and all this. Thursday. We're going to do this Thursday. So um, it'll be the same time on Thursday and um, it'll be for probably an hour and a half. So I put these in little balls right now. So I want to make a mushroom cap because Thursday I really like to work on the trunk and I don't want to use all thick epoxy sculpt to build a trunk because the weight of this is already gonna be quite heavy because of the resin. So what we wanna do is put foil trunk and then epoxy sculpt onto the foil and place that. That way it'll be much lighter and it'll work and be just as strong. Maybe not just strong, but super strong. You won't have to worry about it. So, all right, so I've got my little mushroom and I don't have any of my tools out still, so I don't have many. Let me just find something that might work. End of a screwdriver. I'm gonna dip it in water for a second. And then I'm just gonna push it into the epoxy sculpt. You can use water to smooth it at a certain stage Read the instructions. I think even now you can as we're trying to shape it, which I just did and it did seem to be fine. Look how sticky it is. Oh, it is, oh. You found my tools. Where, where are they? I don't know if I have them. I've got a few tools since I don't work with epoxy a lot. If you work with clay, You probably are going to be loving this stuff, but if you don't, it's it's something you're going to have to learn to work with, and that's okay. It's worth it. The problem I have is trying to get it to come off once I've got the shape I want. So I'm just pinching it around, making its little flutedness. That's so fun, you guys. And you can paint it afterwards, and you can sand it and drill it, ne make necklaces with it, whatever. Okay, now the problem I have with making these is if I don't want to place it yet, you know, like I'm not sure where I want this mushroom. So what am I gonna do with it? <laughs> while it waits. So here's the thing. Let me find you some papers. I have tried, let me put this over here. 
I've tried several different types of papers that I can peel this back off of because we love that it's so sticky, right? I mean, that's the beauty of it. We can put it on our frames. We can make frames out of it. If you have a driftwood scene and an ocean, how beautiful would it be to embellish that frame with epoxy sculpt driftwood, you know? It would just be absolutely fabulous. So it's worth it you guys try it. But when you're waiting to use a piece and you want it to dry on its own, I've used a whole bunch of different things. And the best thing I can find so far is, you know this real thick kind of iridescent plastic? It doesn't stick to that. So you can find it anywhere, I'm pretty sure. And the nice thing is, even if it did stick to it, I mean, it hasn't so far, but if for some reason, you know, the universe changes, you can always just cut it off. Okay, I'm just going to leave this little mushroom cap right there for now, and I'm going to go back to it after this is over and smooth it and sand it and do the things I want to do to it while it's sitting off of its little stem. So that's one paper. The other paper, believe it or not, and this is fabulous. This is what I use when I'm, I take a rolling pin and I wrap this around the rolling pin. And then I also lay it down like that. And it is the back of contact paper from Dollar Tree. <laughs> this contact paper that I put on my desk so I can just rip it up and put more contact paper down again. Um, that's what I do for my art stuff, just so you know. Um, that's what this is. It's the back of that. So I love that we can use all of the product and it peels right up off of it. So just throw it on the floor. So anyway, there's that. I hope that helps. All right, I'm going to finish with the mushroom stem and then we're going to go um, and I will do another notice of a live coming up. It'll be Thursday. If you can't make it, no worries. Cape Charles Art YouTube is my channel there. Please subscribe. And that is where you will find all those things that I do here, in case you want to rewatch them. So that was easy enough. Look at this little guy, he's really cute. That's the stem. <laughs> yeah, I know, I want to see them together. But, how fun to be able to do a painting and then also do sculpting. He's going to be saggy if I put them together right now. That's the thing. You want to leave them separate if it's like, look, um, that's kind of cute. If I can get them kind of hunched like that, it would be cute. Anyway, um, so yeah, play with your epoxy sculpt now. Oh, I'm going to have to just do this again. So that's okay. Just squish it and start over. You got about 40 minutes of working time like that. Anyway, the last paper is glassine. Glassine. And it's expensive to me um, when I can buy things like this. So the glassine I use. Yeah, it's good though. The glassine I use when I'm wrapping my art pieces to send so that nothing gets on them and all that. So that's good. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't want to use this unless I, I absolutely had to <laughs> for, for this. So you guys, I love you all. I thank you so much for all your support and um, your love. Hold on, I'm reading a message. Uh, missing messages. Oh, beautiful. Ruth, thank you. Oh, Sherry, thank you. Perfect. Dawn, thanks for hanging out. Michelle, everybody, Shannon, if you can hear me, thank you. Oops, I just buried my <laughs> poxy sculpt in my glove. <laughs> if you can hear me. Uh, I love you, honey. Prayers to everybody for you, for you and that family. And um, prayers for Turkey, guys. Okay, keep them in your hearts. And look, um, see you Thursday at 11.45. I'll send out a video. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry I didn't get very far. Uh, not
not sorry really uh, but it's neat because we get to start again and this lord willing and the creek don't rise <laughs> we'll have a painting in it by the time i see you next